I call Dr Shane Riti. Uh, tenakwe, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to stand for the first time and speak in this new parliament. I'd like to uh, start by thanking the people of Whangarei for asking me to be their voice in Wellington. And I commit to working hard for them and for the people of New Zealand. I also want to acknowledge my adversaries who competed in the seat, especially the member who's been returned to the House, and I want to wish him well. I also want to encourage him not to lose sight of what matters to Northlanders, or more specifically, to lose sight of the wood for the trees. Mr Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition spoke yesterday about holding this government to account. Yes, eventually, eventually you'll get to it, but that's OK. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition spoke about holding this government to account the benchmarks and the baseline that we will be watching. I want to extend that and localise that to Northland. What are the benchmarks that we are looking for in Northland? What are we starting with? Well, during the campaign, Mr Speaker, the people of Whangarei and the people of Northland told us that jobs and the economy were their number one issue. So let's look at some of the independent measures of those metrics and where the government passed the baton on to the next government. And I use that analogy deliberately because there's evidence to show that in any Olympic race, when you pass the baton on, 10 per cent drop the baton, and I'll come to petrol prices later. Mr Speaker, let's look at some of those uh, economic metrics for Northland. First of all, the latest ASB regional dashboard. Northland, third overall for economic growth of all of the 16 regions, third overall, and moved up to five stars. The top that you can be as ASB Regional Dashboard assesses it. Here's the challenge, then, to the government. Here's the challenge. Here's where we're starting. Maintain a five-star economy in Northland. There's the challenge. ANZ job ads in Northland to June this year, 176 new job ads. Here's the challenge. Do better than 176 new job ads. Thirdly, unemployment, very important figure. Stash New Zealand quite fresh no more than a few weeks ago. Northland down to 6.6%, the lowest in two years. There's the challenge. Do better than 6.6%. Mr Speaker, house prices are also somewhat a measure of economic success. As house prices go up, generally confidence goes up and it reflects economic growth. How has that been for Northland? Well, really interesting. We tended to be a region that sinks quickly and rises slowly. When we're battered by various economic forces, that tends to be our trend. And so the inclination might have been that if there is any buffeting of the economy, Northland would suffer. But in fact, if you look at the Infometric report from two or three days ago, where they identified 10 regions that might suffer adversely from falling housing prices, prices Northland is not in that 10. Probably for the first time for a wee while, we're not going to be the region that takes the hit first and recovers slowly. Now, people also told us that infrastructure was important. Roads are important. And the several roads that impact Whangarei directly. First of all, the road of national significance from Puhoi to Whangarei. And let's break that into segments because it's actually important. There's Puhoi to Wellsford, that's started. Tehana to Whangarei, that's under consultation. And I want to focus on one part of that, the Whangarei to Marsden link, part of the $500 million four-lane announcement that we made. Now, the 400 lanes from Whangarei to Ruakaka or Marsden has a benefit cost ratio of one to five, and parts of that are actually quite high. In fact, Toitoi to Whangarei is three to five. The importance of that is, this is a busy segment of road. It's very busy for several reasons. First of all, we have all the freight coming down from the north that comes down on that road. Secondly, we've got explosive population growth in Northland, quite aside from one of the other members spoke about earlier in the day. We've got explosive population growth, particularly in Bream Bay, particularly One Tree Point. They're coming to Whangarei and they're using that road. The other part or the other component to having such a high benefit to cost ratio was the safety factor. And it's very sad that in the past week we had three deaths south of Whangarei on that exact segment of road. The segment of road that we want to turn into four lanes, reflecting the fact that we think infrastructure is important. My point here is I would strongly encourage this government to continue those four lanes from Whangarei to Ruakaka and to Marsden Point. And if they truly believe the port is that important, they will see this segment of road as being fundamental to servicing the port. And so I would strongly encourage them to do that and to maintain that with some rapidity. Now, in our hands, 
Clearly, Whangarei, I heard it commented as one of the towns, or Northland more specifically, as a zombie town. That just can't be possible. Can't be possible. And I think it shows a lack of respect for people who have worked so hard to get the region to where it is. And we heard the Prime Minister talk about regional development and how important it is. So we've got some licence to explore that. First of all, let's look at the population growth. At least 1,500 people a year are moving to Northland. We think probably this year it's going to be 4,000. We're a popular area now, yeah? Stats New Zealand are also confirming that that's going to be pervasive. That if we look right through to 2038, in the North Island there are seven centres that will grow or keep growing their population, and Whangarei is specifically one of those. Now, with a growing population, every 2.7 people constitutes a household. Each household spends roughly $1,000 of household expenditure in the Whangarei economy, and it cycles through the Whangarei economy. And it's spent on housing, it's spent on food and accommodation, and it's spent on transport. Unfortunately, the transport component has gone up significantly lately, particularly, actually, since this government's been formed. You see, the international environment has seen us as risky in this new government, and consequently, the New Zealand dollar has fallen. Consequence of that is petrol prices have gone up. October 31st, they are at an eight-month high, and yesterday, the main port price is reported as the highest in three years. So that's going to hurt the household expenditure of people in Whangarei. What I also want to briefly comment on is rail, clearly a topical issue uh, for Northland, and I want to reiterate a few things. First of all, if there is a business case for rail, I will support rail. Secondly, the mantra, or the, the narrative, if you like, that we have from Kiwi Rail is that if there are commercial quantities of freight at commercial rates, Kiwi Rail will carry that freight. So a very simple couple of parameters that will certainly have my support, and I'm sure the support of some of my colleagues, Take in mind the fact that the corridor was designated 20 years ago or more, and no government, no government has seen it fit to institute that rail. No government. It didn't make sense in our hands. It won't make sense in yours. But again, if you can show that business case, you will have my support. So, Mr Speaker, it's a pleasure to be back in the House. It's a pleasure to be on this side uh, of the benches looking across. I'd like to acknowledge some of my whanaunga, uh, Willow Jean, Tenakwe, actually wearing the uh, korowai that I wore at my maiden speech because we share the same hapu. So, Tenakwe to you, uh, Willow Jean. And again, I look forward to the rest of this uh, term, Mr. Speaker, and to holding the government to account. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the time has come that the House has agreed for there to be maiden speeches. I'll remind members that uh, maiden speeches are 15 minute speeches, and the bell will ring with five minutes to go.